a rare opportunity for Broome County voters. Let's get off the phones right now. It's Michael Vasquez, who uh, now wants to talk to us after uh, tweeting us a couple of times this morning. Good morning, Mr. Vasquez. Good morning, Bob. How are you today? Super. What's up? Well, I was just listening to your comments, and that's why I sent in my uh, text. Uh, so uh, you then first, before we go any further, respond to the last tweet you sent. Given the way you just attacked me for the statement, uh -huh. so you were attacked on the air. Yes. Attacked. Given the way you just attacked me for the statement to say nothing of our congresswoman, I understand the lack of news coverage. Okay, well, sorry for the attacks. It happens a lot. Right? Yeah, I, I, uh, I will say, and obviously this is my perspective, you, you obviously heard it on the other end of the receiver, I will say I didn't view what I said as an attack, but if, if you felt it to be an attack, I'm sorry for attacking you. It was not intended to be a, an attack. It was intended to have a thoughtful and, and potentially controversial discussion about a campaign 20 days before Election Day. So sorry for attacking you. Sorry for the perceived attack on Congresswoman Tenney. I have attempted not to attack anybody on this program. So if anybody perceived what I said last hour about Michael Vasquez or our Congresswoman Claudia Tenney to be an attack, I, I am sorry. I, I appreciate that, Bob. And I know you and I, we've spoken many times over many years. I, I don't take things personally. Um, it just seemed you were in a role at that moment. So I accept that, and I thank you for that, because it's not personal uh, that I'm not very sure of. But I think our congresswoman is the reason yesterday. I always prefer fundraisers to be wide open whenever possible. I always like that myself, personally. But I can understand, given what happened on Friday with the attacks in New York City, which I would love to hear Matt Ryan speak about, especially since he's very much associated with citizen action in the far left in this region and, and the attacks by Antifa in New York City. I'd love to hear his comment on it. But given that, which and the fact that she's been getting death threats continuously and they have amped up, and in this recent environment where we're seeing so many attacks, physical attacks, on members of Congress, yeah, I can understand why they might want to have this, this incident to be less than uh, less than open to the entire public. It's not a shock. Bob? Okay. I mean, does that make sense to you? I don't understand why she wouldn't talk to reporters. I'm looking at, at Michael Schwartz's, uh, apparently, I, I assume this was written by Michael Schwartz or one of his colleagues at 12 News. Tenney's campaign told 12 News on Tuesday that the congresswoman did not wish to speak with the media outside of her private campaign event. Well, on a private a fundraiser, I can possibly understand that. Why? But at, at the same no, time... No, no, well, no, don't... don't attention. No, oh. explain. Don't just throw a bomb and then move on. Now is the time to explain why you can understand why Congresswoman Claudia Tenney, three weeks before Election Day didn't want to talk to 12 News or any other reporters in Binghamton yesterday. So tell us why you understand that. Why? Well, because I've been listening to the coverage and watching the coverage that's been happening in the Southern Tier. And I've seen it. It's very much biased. Now, yeah. Wait. Wait. 12 News is famous for balanced coverage. That's all they have on their station. So I don't know. And, 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 and to talk about what happens say on a talk show this is let's say a, a local talk show is just like uh, the opinion programs on on cable news at night whether it's on fox news or or msnbc people give opinions during opinion segments as far as coverage look at 12 news it's the most balanced coverage in the history of tv i'm i'm not questioning that particular reporter so my question is why wouldn't she talk to 12 News reporter Michael Schwartz. I saw him out there. He was out there. I don't know. He might have been out there for two hours or whatever, covering for the live shots at, I believe, 5, 5.30 and 6, and then later. And she wouldn't talk to Michael Schwartz from 12 News? 
Well, I mean, that's not the first time that reporters have been standing outside of an event and didn't get to cover it. I've had it happen. You've had it happen. I know, and I, it'll happen again. I'm saying specifically in this case, tell me why, in your view, that Claudia Tenney wouldn't talk with local reporters on State Street yesterday. I don't work for the campaign, and I don't speak for the congressman. But I, you said you understood why. So you understand something that I don't understand, so share your understanding with me. What possible uh, benefit would Claudia Tenney get by not talking with reporters yesterday? The way I look at it, she could only have gained because, and you know the way the media works, Michael, the media operate, we, we have X amount of time for a story. TV news, maybe, if they're lucky, they could go two minutes. Most of the time they may go a minute 45, so they don't have much time. So say if a, a story is slotted for about 100 seconds, well, Michael Schwartz or whoever's working for News Channel 34 or Fox 40 or Spectrum News, they will include part, maybe a, a, a sound bite with a protester, then, then maybe somebody from the campaign, maybe a sound bite from Paul Ryan, which no sound bites were available, and then maybe even a sound bite from Claudia Tenney, but none were available because she didn't want to talk with reporters yesterday outside of her private campaign event. I don't understand. I, well, one, it's not a surprise because I've seen Anthony from DC do the same thing many times. Two, I've watched and read the news in the southern tier overall, not speaking about this reporter specifically, um, because I don't remember his articles offhand, but I've seen the slant that has been very much against Republicans, a uh, congresswoman in particular, for several months, since at least January, if not way longer. Third, I also noticed that there's a lot of things that are missing in the coverage. By the way, did anyone notice that the NRA this Monday just re-rated all of the candidates, and in particular, there was Anthony Brindisi, Donald Pardo, Clifford Crouch, were all re-rated. And in particular, Anthony Brindisi had a 7 rating, an F, and that's specifically because of the red flag legislation votes that he made, but no one's talked about that. Again, that's a slant. That's a very important factor, especially because of the election coming up, and there are many gun owners in New York State, New York, especially in the Southern Tier region, and it's of particular interest to those voters, but I don't hear anyone talking about that besides myself. And so, yeah, there is a slant against Republicans overall that I've noticed in the local news media, and in particular towards our, in this election against our incumbent congresswoman, and important facts for voters that they should be able to make their own mind up about is not being given to them, like the Utica eminent domain, which I know you don't believe is important and have said, well, when it gets closer to the election, you won't talk about it. Well, now it's closer to the election. It's still ongoing since January, and I still think it's important. But a lot of this news isn't being covered. If Claudia Tenney wants to come on this program and speak for 10 minutes, no, not 10 minutes, five minutes about why that Utica issue is important to Binghamton voters, I, I invite her on. I, I want Claudia Tenney to come on the program by the end of the week and explain for five interrupted, uninterrupted minutes why the Utica issue should be uh, of interest to people in Binghamton. I'm sure her staff are listening to this and they'll pass that okay. on again. I don't uh, speak for her. No, I know you I, don't, but you defend her, and, and I'm which is fine, by the way, but I'm saying... I want Claudia Tenney to come on the program by the end of the week and for five uninterrupted minutes explain to me why she thinks the people of Binghamton ought to care what's going on with that issue in Utica. Uh, yeah, I can tell you why I think so, but I, I'm sure she would love to do that because I think it's an important character issue as well as important to understand what kind of representation we receive. And I'm sure that Anthony has and his supporters have many good points about their candidate. I've known him for five years. I'm not telling you that he's an evil person, although we hear in the news media many people on the far left think Republicans are evil. I don't agree with that kind of thinking. I'm not saying he's a terrible person, but I am telling you that he, and that's an important issue. Voters should know about it so they can make up their own mind, and I think it's critical. Now, one other thing. I still don't understand. I still 
am perplexed by this, the last six words in your last tweet. You said, I understand the lack of news coverage. The lack of what news coverage? I said lack of news coverage? Let me oh, read oh. your last tweet because I want to understand where where news coverage is lacking. Given the way you just attacked me for the statement to say nothing of our congresswoman, I understand the lack of news coverage. E elucidate. Yeah, okay, okay. I, what's the lack okay. of news coverage? Well, in that respect, again, that's what we've been talking about. Based on the negative nature of the news and lack of accurate and complete news about this race on both candidates, and it's what appears to be a bias in the way it's coming across, then I understand why any candidate would be less than eager to provide anyone in the Southern Tier news coverage. Because it's, you know, who wants to go out and get attacked? Who wants to come, who wants to come on to a program or to write in or uh, give an interview and know that it's going to be turned around into an attack? It's something that they're going to be less than positive to do, whether it's an election year or not. And then you tend to see that. So I'm not surprised that any candidate would say would be less eager to do that. No one wants to, uh, no one wants to walk into an attack and have their words misrepresented or, you know, in a, give a speech for two hours and it gets summed up. Literally, you saw this happen. Well, it still, it still, it still makes no sense why she didn't want to be included in last night's stories following a, a visit by one of the most powerful Republican figures in our nation. You would think that she she did a, an interview with the Utica TV station before Paul Ryan's visit to Binghamton, and she seemed happy to talk about that. That's essentially what she could have said last night to Michael Schwartz from 12 News, and it would have been on at 10 and 11. And then this morning on the, uh, the morning news i i don't un, i still you still haven't explained to me why claudia tenney on a tv newscast wouldn't want uh, an eight second sound bite thanking paul ryan and her supporters for the binghamton events because and again i don't speak for the campaign i mean to be very clear i am a republican i don't speak for the campaign but to my understanding yes you can get an eight second sound bite which doesn't capture what actually happens uh, and that's that the nature of TV of news that I mean, look, it, here it is. It was three weeks before Election Day. So getting even if it was only an eight second soundbite on the most wonderful balanced news in the history of TV at 10 on the WB and then at 11 live on Channel 12 or 12.1. What, uh, you know, I still don't understand the downside. It's not like coming on this program and answering questions from Bob. I mean, it's Michael Schwartz. They're providing the balanced coverage that America savers. And then you're going to come on and you're going to, and you have attacked her for similar types of news and similar types of statements, which, and she's going to get it back. And that's something that's not fun. Again, I'm not justifying what she did or did not do. She's got her own campaign, and I'm sure she spoke with her staff, and she had a reason for it. I can only guess. Yeah, I can only guess too. I don't. I again, you know, here we are, 14 minutes into this conversation. I still, Michael, I'm an open-minded person, and I, I've listened to what you've said. I still don't understand how that benefited her campaign. I don't understand why she wouldn't talk after a fundraiser with Michael Schwartz balance coverage and maybe some other reporters by then i was gone because i i knew there was two things there were two things michael vasquez i knew about the event yesterday one paul ryan certainly wouldn't talk to me two claudia tenney probably wasn't going to talk with reporters although i didn't know that for a fact but it turned out my gut feeling was true so i went home and 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 had dinner i mean if if i thought there was a chance that she would talk about her fundraiser and give us an assessment on the campaign with three weeks to go, I probably would have stayed around. As it was, I felt sorry for Michael Schwartz having to stay there and not be able to even have one word with the Speaker of the House. And then 
Even worse, our congresswoman wouldn't talk with him. That might be unprecedented. No, it's not. You know it's not. Well, it might be unprecedented in, in, in respect to uh, a fundraiser less than a month before a critical election. I've been reporting in this bird for a long time. I don't recall. I don't recall Richard Hanna or... Uh, who was the other congressman? What what was his name? Maurice Maurice Hinchy. Is that his name? Did did he ever duck the media? No. Now maybe he had a gun on him. Maybe he was packing heat in case the reporter like Bob got out of hand. But he didn't. He didn't say, "Oh, I don't want to talk to the media because they might ask me a harsh question." Your memory on, on uh, Representative Hinchy is a little bit short because, yes, he did, and so did Hannah. I've had it happen to me, and I've seen it happen to other reporters as well. All yes, right. All right. Well, if you insist, it, I, you know, who, who am I to judge? I'm just. No, I'm not saying that you're that's a good or bad thing, but you're saying it never happened with them. That's not true. It has happened to them. To me no, I said I don't remember it. Them. I don't remember okay. it happening. That's different than it didn't yeah, happen. Yeah. I don't remember. Look, and now you're going to pick on people who are of advanced age who, who have memory problems. If you're going to attack me for having a memory problem, you know, next thing you know, people are going to be mocking me for being of advanced age and getting forgetful. Do I, do I have to look as old as you, Bob? Do I have to look have forward to that, too. that the mocker in chief is going to start mocking me because occasionally I forget? I forget as well. I'm almost as old as you, so I understand. Rub it in, baby. Rub it in. Hey, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised you. You're young, Michael. I'm surprised you're not on the radio saying, "Ooh, I'll always be younger than you, Bob." <laughs> no, I'm not saying that. <laughs> anyway, hey, Michael, thank you very much for having a, a spirited conversation as always. Thank you, and please do ask Matt when he comes on. What is what is he doing to make sure that Antifa does not come into Binghamton as they have been? Uh, it seems the rumors are that they're indicating they. Well, he's right here. Oh, wait, oh, I didn't hear the question. Yeah, well, oh, yeah. Repeat the question. Matt Ryan's right here, and and Matt Ryan, who is the expert on uh, Antifa coming to Binghamton. So so listen carefully to Michael Vasquez <laughs> pose this this question seriously. This is now Matt Ryan, who's former Binghamton mayor and, and running for sheriff. Okay, Michael Vasquez, ask the question, because I want to know, too, what, what Matt Ryan sure. is going to do to keep Antifa from coming here on State Street and, and wrecking my, my lunch hour. Wait, well, wait, hold on. Listen, uh, Matt Ryan, listen to, to Michael's question. Yeah. Uh, well, Look, I, I, I can't even... I mean, when you see what the, uh, the alt-right did in... Uh, just this week. We're not talking about the alt right. No, I'm talking We're about the alt right. Here. I can answer the I'm question any way I want to answer the question. Yeah, and what and what about those proud boys? They brought yeah, exactly. in so called proud, proud boys, boys. And, and did you see yeah. what they did on video? Look, in yeah. Charleston in Charleston the whole thing was it was orga an organized alt right protest to uh, that was going there to cause trouble and that's what Antifa does. They confront people who are have uh, um you know, fascist tendencies who have, um, um, Berkeley. Yeah, I mean, that's what they do. And, uh, Berkeley? What's that? Berkeley? Yes, that's what they do. So, Mike, you know, uh, okay. you, can, you can say what you want, but, uh, they are okay. a reaction to the extreme right wing people that the FBI, go at, go look at uh, the sites and go see how many of the, um, the violent organizations that the FBI is looking into are right-wing organizations. Antifa, no, including yeah. Antifa, which is considered a domestic terrorist okay. by the government. And, by, and, oh, and there's about 40 groups of right-wing and uh, terrorists. There are there, more on the left as well, but no, that's there isn't. Not what we're really talking about. The question I'm understanding from what you're saying, and please correct me if I'm wrong, you're saying that a violent organization they're not violent. Justified. They are there to prevent violence and not allow people to come into a community I'm and sure perpetrate their violence. If violent. they were, if they were, you know, confronted by the the poor. What's their name again? The poor boy. Uh, no, proud, proud boys. boys. The yeah. proud boys. I mean, what a, what an odd name yeah, for a proud, bunch of thugs. The proud boys. Violent thugs. You know, those That's things can get ug those things can get ugly, but these people have organized to uh, to make sure that people understand. Uh, that the groups that, unfortunately, our president has uh, said, oh, they're all, there's 
good people on each side. There was no good people in Charleston who who perpetrated the uh, the main event there. Will, there was none of those people up. are good people. So you think if you think and the president question. thinks they're good people, then be my guest. But Antifa is there to uh, make sure okay. that they don't get away with intimidating and and um, you know basically they go in and. I mean, if you if you look at so just any one clarification, just I'll, I'll let you go on because I don't want to take away Bob's time from questions, but I want to just clarify. So you support Antifa, is that correct? I support any group that um, says that they're you know, that yeah. trying to look, Mike. I don't care. I'm not here to answer your questions. I I I don't. You're not a voter. If if, if, if if um yeah, you're not voting for me. So what do I care? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> wait, I'm, wait. I'm, that's I'm waiting for your answer. Matt Ryan. Wait no, a second. Saying, Clarify what that. What I'm saying, Mike, is that if, wait. If you're, uh, I don't I don't attribute. I would certainly appoint. Um, you know, I don't I don't condone any violence in any demonstration, and I think Antifa doesn't either, unless uh, they are confronted uh, by other violence they won't shy away from it so they're they're uh, the other groups that i my take on it is the group the right alt-right groups and and the, and the fascist groups and the nazis sympathizers they come ready for violence and they showed that the other night when the proud boys did what they did one of those groups so uh, and they they were laughing about it afterwards they have them on tape laughing about how to kick people in the face and stuff don't tell me these are antifa I just think it's a different animal. I'm not okay, condoning violence on either side. All right. Well, appreciate the questions, Michael Vasquez. And um, also, uh, Matt Ryan, thanks for entertaining. I mean, again, why not? You know, I mean, it came up and, right. you know, right. right. And he is a Broome County resident and a Broome County voter. And who's to say in just a moment, I can convince him. that's what I was just going to say. I mean, the election isn't for 20 days right. unless he is already. I don't, I don't think he's uh, uh, sent in a, an absentee ballot. So my but, guess is the, the problem. I, you know, he's called in and complained about me. And, well, he's complaining about me. Yeah, he said exactly. I attacked him and Claudia look, Tenney. Look, there's no way that Michael Vasquez is an independent journalist. He has his causes and he advocates for them. I don't you know, I I applaud him for paying attention and doing what he does, but don't try to pass yourself off as somebody who is a nonpartisan person giving everybody the same shake. You don't. I, I know you well enough to know that. Uh, well, I, heck, he's been a, a candidate before. Right, exactly. So, so you I, know, which I, I think I think that should be taken also in context when either he uh, tweets to us or is on, on the program, he has been a Republican candidate before. In fact, he wanted to to run for that house seat in New York's twenty second congressional district. So that would know. look like that would be like me if I if they decided I wanted to be a reporter. Uh, saying, oh yeah. Saying that I Can was. you imagine if Twelve News <laughs> hired Matt Ryan and put you on as part of their balance coverage? I mean, <laughs> then and in you know, in fairness to Claudia Tenney, if you, if they if Twelve News said, oh, we're going to put Matt Ryan on the Claudia Tenney campaign, she would have a point. Right. Yeah. But they don't. They put right. Michael Schwartz on. The guy is so balanced, it's insane. Have you noticed? I I, I actually, uh, I'm not sure. With I, I read some of the articles, but yeah. I'm not, I don't but really think it's, it's, it's extremely balanced. Oh, okay. I don't it's know. balanced to a fault. I've never seen coverage so balanced. Oh, well, I'll take and I've been I'll in the business your, for... I'll, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> it no, it's fine. Okay. But in my opinion, so are the other TV stations. So is the newspaper. Don't you think? In, in the end, well, I don't think anybody. I don't think any of our media around here really takes a extreme position, except from twelve to six every day. What's on the national media? But that and those are opinion Nine. shows. I, I mentioned that to Michael Vasquez before that opinion shows like this one, or the syndicated shows, or the opinion shows on cable TV at night. They're different than news coverage people have to recognize just like the editorial page or the op-ed page in the newspaper is different than the the editor the news pages right yeah anyway we will talk about the broom county sheriff's campaign in just a moment with candidate matthew ryan that's next exclusively on wnbf and worldwide on wnbf.com <laughs> 